And my first day at school was nerve-wracking, I have to tell you, because even though I lived in the neighborhood and had certain friends that were in the neighborhood, I didn't know the big throng of students that went to East Topeka Junior High. And I should go back and say it was interesting that Topeka Lutheran had a a contract or a relationship with East Topeka Junior High. So in eighth grade, I went to East Topeka for home ec, as they called it then. Mm -hmm. And I remember going into the school because the bus, Topeka Lutheran bus, would pull up, which was like two blocks from my house, but at East Topeka Junior High. And when I was getting off the bus and walking in, there would be kids at the window looking out and pointing at me like, look, who oh. is, what's going on there? Right. So, so you were introduced a little bit to them, but yeah, not really. But in a different way. Right. I had some friends that knew me so by the time I got there it was um, nerve-wracking in that I didn't know how I would be received again and I can tell you that thank goodness for a couple of friends I had a young man uh, Jimmy McMurray I would say his name who walked me to school mm -hmm. every morning and every lunch hour because my first few weeks were trying mm -hmm. there were some young girls that would come to the locker and say where'd you get those shoes who do you think you are why are you at this school so it took me a while it took me that whole first year well first semester I'd say, before the masses of students accepted me there. Mm -hmm. I had a core group of friends, thank God, because then you had an experience that didn't allow things to get out of hand. There were some that didn't receive me very well. They wanted to beat me up, quite honestly. So yeah. Jimmy was the one that would walk me to school and walk me home from lunch. But all in all, I can tell you that it was a fun experience because I felt like I had arrived back at home. The teachers were kind and generous and I had one special teacher. Her name was Mrs. Hayes. She was an African American teacher. And probably after the first month of school she took me aside and she said, because once I got there and made friends. I was chatty, so I had a good time. I just was having fun all the time. And Mrs. Hayes took me aside and she said, you're too bright, you're too smart to waste your time like you're doing. She said, young lady, I'm watching you and I need you to be you. And she said, while you're here to enjoy yourself and have a social life, she said, the most important thing you can do in life is to study. She was my English teacher and to this day, I love English. When did you graduate from high school? Graduated from high school in 1968, and mm. all of that was very good, too. I think the evolution was one that people in my class weren't really aware of to the degree that people thought about what happened in segregated times. But I can tell you, while we weren't conscious, we, we had patterns that resembled segregation. Mm -hmm. Second floor in Topeka High School was known as the place where uh, black students congregated. So when I got to school, I'd go to my locker, I'd head to second floor. And every black that, um, I won't say every black, but many of us congregated there and talked. We knew about what was going on the weekend, if there was going to be something happening. So that was the same. I think the other thing that resembled what perhaps was segregation is that at lunchtime, we had a place in the lunchroom and it was never assigned. Mm -hmm. It was things that we purposely did. We sought each other out to be able to have our own time and our own fun. Mm -hmm. So kind of similar. And, the, and my dad graduated from Topeka High School also in 1938. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to him, it was the same thing they were doing. Uh, the second floor was known as our floor or the African American floor and um, no problems happened, but it certainly was where we congregated and had our fun. Certainly aware of community dynamics, not in 1968 did we have to sit in a balcony. I remember doing that maybe with my mother and I remember that there were um, uh, times, I'll say, that a specific example, there was an Al's Drug Store. It was located at 9th and Kansas Avenue, and they had some of the best hamburgers. But I remember Mom and I going to that uh, establishment, and we had to pick up our hamburger. We had to go to the side door, 
and it was given to us in a brown paper bag. So we weren't allowed to go in and sit and order our food. Uh, we, we had to go stand and then pick it up on the side. If, if I can, I'd like to go back to the high school just a minute. Yeah. Because one of the other things that was different about the high school that I, I think is that while we were integrated in so many ways and all of our classes were together, what hadn't really changed, quite honestly, is that we had um, Queen of Courts, we had Homecoming, we had All School, and never ever had there been an African American female that had the opportunity to be crowned a queen. Certainly they had been part of the court, mm -hmm. and I think people thought that was some kind of a um, step forward. But I remember that my senior year, that the senior African American males on that played sports, whether it was basketball or football, said, we're gonna have a queen this year. Somehow we're gonna make this happen. And so they identified some of us young ladies that they thought they wanted to at least run. And I was fortunate enough to be able to run for, uh, it was all school okay. party. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I did win that year. Okay. But that was 14 years after mm -hmm. the first time. And, and to be clear, when they had the segregated schools, they had African-American queens, but they were African-American queens for the African-American students. This was the first time that they had an African-American queen that was for the whole student body mm -hmm. that both white and black students voted on. So a, a door opened there. Mm -hmm. uh, a year later though, that group of students said, I don't just want the door open, I want a black cheerleader. I want more than just one opportunity. We're not gonna just have this token black and be satisfied. Yeah. So while I opened that door, or I didn't open the door, my opportunity to become queen helped lead the idea that we could get even more and deserve more. Mm -hmm. So the, the, your class, which is 1968, what you're talking about is in 1969, 1970, is that there was a walkout. Um, did you hear about that or know anything that was happening regarding that walkout? I did, and it was astounding. I was already away at college and got the word that, oh my goodness, there's been this big brouhaha, which never happened mm -hmm. in our school, in our city, quite honestly, that was overtly racist. You, you knew about racism, you kind of experienced it, you couldn't go to certain places, but there were weren't riots that I read about. There wasn't a, uh, a, a bullhorn in somebody's face, no snarling dogs that made you afraid. But we knew that we were still under some kind of an oppression that didn't allow us to be totally who we could and should be. So it was quite fun and interesting to get the word that there was going to be a big walkout and I knew the students that did it and it was certainly Lance Murphy uh, led the charge. He knew my cousins which was Enoch Jackson and um, they were already at KU so they helped them develop this walkout and they were successful it was mm -hmm. just but it I mean who again the children shall lead because it wasn't like our adults were taking that stance while we had the NAACP I think a, a year after that and I can't be I, we started having the CCBC, Coordinating Committee of the Black Community, which was led by Eva Lou Martin. So a lot of things started happening then that said, we're no longer going to accept things as they are. We're going to make them as they should be. You know, I don't know that there was any one thing. Mm -hmm. I think there were a number of things. The, the tone of our country was changing. The... Um, energy in terms of we're going to be different mm -hmm. than our old guard folks had been. I don't, I, I would like to say there'd never been a complacency in Topeka, Kansas, but I don't know that I can say that without um, some people disagreeing. The reason why I say there was never a complacency is that I was always aware 
that there was a underground and that we would uh, kind of join forces if necessary. Mm -hmm. I, and that's difficult to pinpoint to put my fingers on, but as I heard adults talk about it, you never heard any of them express a fear or a, I'm going to accept less than what I'm supposed to have. I think individuals always, at least my family, my dad knew that he was going to walk into a store and be treated with dignity and respect or he wasn't going to use that store. I think what happened is the younger generation said, well, we're no longer going to do it as individuals. We're going to do this in an organized fashion. We're going to call attention in a way because, you know, things had never been that bad in Topeka, Kansas. But it wasn't about things being that bad. It was about things are going to be better. better. And the only way that's going to happen is if we organize and we start standing up like we see things happening in our nation. Mm -hmm. That will open those doors.